Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Manuela Impelizzeri Camp. Uh, I head up the uh, events and volunteer engagement team at the APM. Uh, with me today, we have uh, Sarah Slater, whom you just met, our CMO volunteering manager, um, Natalie Kepler, our branches manager, and Robbie Carter Evans, who he has as a, our education outreach manager. Uh, they will all um, speak at some point today, so they will be able to introduce themselves a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, my role um, is about making sure that all the activities that we do, both from an events perspective and a volunteering perspective, are uh, the most suitable to support our members and uh, project professionals overall. Um, we, we run a number of different activities that you will learn more about today. I guess some of you online might be already uh, volunteering with us, some might not, so uh, some of you will know uh, part of what we will be talking about, uh, but hopefully there be, will be something interesting for uh, everyone. In summary, what uh, volunteering at APM uh, is about, uh, as I said, we uh, run a number of different activities and the um, opportunity to volunteer at APM offers um, a wide range of different benefits. Obviously, um, it helps with your skill development. Uh, it offers a huge amount of different networking opportunities in very diverse environments. Uh, professional development. Uh, we have members from uh, student level to up to very senior professionals so, uh, and we support uh, all over the career journey uh, and then to enhance the knowledge of the industry and not, not uh, less important contributing so giving back contributing in the profession personal growth and recognition. Um, so at any level and in every in any field you're working uh, in, uh, volunteering uh, at APM has something uh, for you. Um, so these are the various roles that um, you can have as a volunteer uh, with the APM. Uh, maybe Sarah, you'd like to speak a little bit more about some of them. Um, yes, certainly. So um, there's quite a list there. As you can see, the, the first two uh, we'll touch on in a little bit more detail um, in a little while. But um, a couple that I'd just like to mention, we have a, a mentoring program here at APM um, that's available for our APM members to become involved in. So as an APM member, you can become a mentor or a reverse mentor. Um, it's a program that's available on our uh, community for our members, and it offers an amazing uh, offer in support of all our members, uh, regardless of where they are in their career. So that's one area of mentoring. Of, of volunteering. Another one is um, something like you could become a blog insight writer. That's quite low intensive in your time and you can really sort of manage that in accordance to your availability um, and do as much or as little as you like so it's not quite so intensive in your time. Um, other than that, th as you can see, there's still a lot there for you to select from. Uh, maybe Robin, you could talk to the Graduate Owner Apprenticeship Ambassador piece. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, uh, yes, uh, I have a graduate and apprenticeship ambassadors or education ambassadors. Um, and that is an opportunity to go out and speak to students. So uh, anywhere from uh, secondary school way through up to university um, and speaking about lots of the times it's speaking about your career journeys and your kind of roots into how you got into the career, the kind of skill sets that you're uh, that are useful in project management, what's new in project management, what are the kind of emerging technologies. Um, you can imagine lots of students are interested in jobs, so it, anything career-based is, is always really popular. We do a range of events from um, an intro to our student memberships through to kind of evening panel events. Um, and we've got some new ideas coming up, even talking about projects that people have run or uh, guest lectures on specific topics. So uh, lots of uh, universities like to have people coming and speak about different frameworks, agile, waterfall, 
um, or uh, we've got one coming up about risk. Uh, they're going to be looking for someone to speak on a specific topic. So essentially a, a chance for you to give back to students, um, to give some insights about what it's like in the career and in the industry, how to get into the industry, um, and I mean any sort of pearls of wisdom or nuggets that you've got uh, are always greatly appreciated. And the students love it. Uh, the universities find it really appealing to be able to link back into the profession um, and hopefully my volunteers would say that it's a uh, it's a worthwhile thing for them to do in their time uh, thanks robin i'll um i'll just mention as an additional one sort of to uh for a bit of a highlight the uh, awards uh, judge as a, a possible volunteering opportunity um we have a number of different awards programs the main ones are the apm project management uh, awards uh, which is celebrated in november entries this year will open in mid-april uh, that celebrates uh, individual organizations and projects um, and there are around 20 categories uh, and uh, we always um, welcome uh, our volunteers in the judging panels. Uh, the time commitment is quite diverse depending on your availability uh, but also the type of category that uh, you're assigned. Uh, there are some categories that have got quite a large number of entries so uh, uh, they're fairly time consuming, other than are less. So depending on your availability then you would be assigned to uh, the right group. Uh, and then we have the Education and Research Awards, um, recognizing um, achievements in the uh, early careers and academic areas of the profession. Um, wide range of categories here as well, uh, and it's meant to show uh, case new talent. Um, we are going to celebrate it this year at uh, our June flagship conference um, on the 5th and 6th of June. Uh, entries are currently uh, open. Um, the time commitment here is um, not very heavy, um, so I'm very happy uh, to um, welcome any of you um, to express any, their interest to join one of the panels. Uh, we will go much more in detail later um, on the regional networks and the interest networks. Um, so again, on the benefits, we've, we've briefly touched on it uh, earlier, uh, but this is a sort of a bit more comprehensive list of what benefits you can have by volunteering with APM. So obviously networking with a very wide range of different professionals at various stages in our career, uh, very, very many different uh, sectors, uh, networking as well as learning from others and expanding your skills, uh, giving back, uh, contribution to the profession. Uh, our volunteers are, are very, very um, engaged um, and love the opportunity to um, support others. Uh, obviously have recognition, uh, career development, um, the possibility to be invited to our volunteers forum that currently uh, is twice a year. Uh, we have volunteers newsletter uh, with all the different activities, showing all the different activities that we do. Uh, a number of bespoke offer for volunteers uh, during the year. Um, all of our volunteers receive a digital badge that can be used to um, show uh, that you volunteer with APM on your LinkedIn profiles or email, uh, etc. Um, the um, time spent volunteering with the APM can be logged at CPD hours uh, as well, if you wish. Um, and it's fun. Uh, there's a there's quite a lot of it's a very um, friendly community, uh, and therefore it's not only professionally very valuable, but also uh, good good friendship uh, come out of it. So just moving on to and focusing on our interest networks and regional networks. So these are new opportunities that are coming um, out to our, our members and non-members. They will be coming through as of April. Um, the purpose, so our, I'm more involved in the interest networks and I'll hand over to Natalie to focus on the regional networks in a moment. But really the interest networks are currently known as our SIGs, specific interest groups. Um, 
and the, the idea is that they will actually continue to sort of do the same sort of role they will create and develop content and that that will be for sharing um, some of it is uh, member benefits some most of it is for the wider profession um, it's it's a a great forum, a place for people to network with like-minded individuals with an interest in a specific area of, of your career, your profession. So we have currently 14, six, so we will be having 14 uh, interest networks going forward. And if your interest is risk, then you have that forum where you can um, talk to, to people within that group about that particular topic um, and subject area. The, the idea is that um, moving from what is quite a formal structure of a SIG, um, which has a committee, it's uh, opening it up to a wider community, more people can get involved, um, and it will just be broaden that conversation, and we will hopefully also um, expand on the content that they'll be able to share and produce. Um, so that's probably sort of, a, in a nutshell, the, the purpose of our interest networks. I don't, if you want to expand on the regional networks for us, Natalie. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Sarah. So um, regional networks are the new format of what is currently known as the branches. And it's very much about that local connection. So it's more of that face to face in person building a, a community. And as it says on the slide there, it's really about engaging APM members or people that would perhaps become members, prospective members, and just your wider project community on the ground. So there's various opportunities in terms of working on actual activities that you might be able to offer to people within that region that might be in the form of conferences or CPD events, opportunities for people to get together and um, network or just connect with their peers within a specific area. But then there's also that wider connection piece. So it's about representing APM to various groups within that region. Um, I'll go into it a little bit later in the slides, but I'm talking about things like connecting with educational organizations or building APM's brand with corporates within your network. There's a lot of opportunities for people to get involved in that kind of collaboration and promotion space as well. So we are inviting volunteers to express their interest and, and let us know if they'd like to get involved with their local regions. At the moment, it's based across the UK. I appreciate that there's lots of volunteers who want to get involved who perhaps might not be based within the UK regions and that is something that we'll explore in the future as we expand but at the moment we're inviting people from across our UK regions to to get involved and help us in building those communities wherever they are. Thanks Natalie. Um, so just take a, a bit of a closer look at the the two networks that we've we've touched on so far so the interest networks there uh, you can see on the screen hopefully um, sort of a, a the, the, the structure of how the interest networks will be um, working will have initially there'll be um, two people leading the network there'll be a network lead and a network deputy lead and they their role will play um, in sort of coordinating the efforts of everyone within that network within that that group that team in addition to our two lead roles we will have um, network volunteers um, that is open, as I said earlier, to as many people that are interested. You can be a member or a non-member and get involved in an interest network. And in addition to that, if it's a subject matter that you're you're interested in but don't perhaps have the, the time, uh, time is very precious, you maybe not got the time to volunteer and actively get involved in some of the activities that they might do, you can become a follower. So um, in the same way that we have people who follow our SIGs and volunteer with our SIGs, you can do exactly the same with our interest networks. We will be moving our interest networks into a new platform, a new space for them to uh, work together, collaborate, have those conversations, and that will be on the APM community. So that's all being worked on at the moment. So there'll be a space for you to get involved, uh, um, see the content that's been produced, contribute to that content, or like I say, just get involved in the conversation that might be going on in, in the given subject that's of your interest. Some of the, um, as I said, we've got 14 
SIGs at the moment, so we'll have 14 interest networks come April. Um, I've listed them there. We'll be able to share these slides, and there's a link to each each one of those, their dedicated web page on our website. Uh, literally hot off the press, we've got two new interest networks that will be coming, and they'll be launched in April as well, uh, one on sustainability and one on built environment. So we don't have any pages for you to visit on that, uh, but if you do have a particular interest in either of those areas, then please please do contact us. Um, you can do that at our main um, email address of volunteers at apm.org.uk. But we will be sharing more information on those two new um, interest networks when they're more established and we have some content to share with you. Um, the 14 SIGs that you currently see there, they all have their dedicated web page, as I say, so you can contact them directly at this moment and still get involved. And later on, we've got a slide where we can show you where you can go if you actively want to start a, um, volunteering with one of these um, and get involved as an interest network volunteer come April and onwards. So for the regional networks, it's largely similar to the um, kind of structural changes that uh, Sarah outlined with the changes towards the interest networks. The big difference is that it's not going to be based on an online platform. This is very much a face-to-face -face connection opportunity, um, but saying that the majority of our current branches meet virtually, so there won't be any need for our volunteers to be attending um, kind of the regular meetings in person. That's all done on a regional basis. What I would say, though, is that um, in terms of the event delivery and, and the connections that you'll be making to promote PM at, uh, APM that is done at your local regional level so we are looking for people who are based within the region that they're going to be volunteering in to, just so that they can be making the biggest impact with um, the project profession within that region so again structurally we'll have um, the different layers of the team there we've got the regional network lead and the deputy lead who are going to be kind of driving the team and, and the activity in the area and then alongside them we'll have the regional network team of volunteers who will be really um, coming up with the activities determining what um, they're going to be working on and again that role is open to members and non-members so if you're a non-member who's looking to get involved with APM that's a good way to to kind of try it out and see what we're about and then the largest outer ring of that circle we've also got the regional network followers which are the people within your region who aren't actively volunteering but who would be involved in kind of the activities that you're running and the collaborations that you're getting involved with so that would be either APM members or other project professionals that are based within the region that you are connecting with and producing those activities for. In terms of how these um, volunteer groups are going to run it's a, a really exciting time get involved because part of the move over to the new structure is um, aimed at allowing our regions to really be autonomous and, and drive the activity that they want to focus on. So you have huge potential in getting involved and really shaping what that activity looks like within your region. And I think part of that is down to the fact that we appreciate people have a much better understanding of what their local regional needs are. Um, so we are empowering our volunteers to help us shape that together. But um, we are providing kind of a structure of the key areas that are important to us as APM. And we are encouraging our um, volunteer groups to focus on kind of those key activity areas, which are the bullet points that you can see on this slide here. So if you were volunteering within your region, it's likely that you might be involved in some of those activities that are outlined um, in the bullet points. So that would be things like connecting with potential members or developing and delivering CPD events, connecting with local education institutions. And then there's a lot of opportunity to help us build our networks in some of our key target groups like our emerging project professionals, the people that have just started out, graduates and apprentices and, and students who are looking for roles. We really want to build vibrant communities within our regions um, with those kind of target audiences. So this is just a map of the spread of our um, currently branches, what will be 
regional networks. And as you can see, it's stretching across all of the UK. And then we also have um, a region in the Channel Islands, which was launched last year, and an existing region in Greater Bay Area, which is Hong Kong. As I mentioned previously, we are looking at expanding internationally, but we're not quite at the level yet where we're actively recruiting volunteers in international regions aside from Greater Bay Area. Um, so if you are interested and you are based internationally, I would say still reach out to us and we can certainly keep your information on file. Um, and once we do become active in your region, we can get back in touch and, and start to, to build that volunteer network with your help. But um, you can see some of those regions have quite a big geographical span. Um, for instance, we've got Scotland, which spans the whole country. Um, it's likely that we would have smaller territories within those really big geographical areas. So if you are based in, in one of these regions and you don't know whether you'd be able to perhaps engage with the teams that you've seen being active, I would say still reach out to us and we can try and facilitate something that um, you could contribute to as a volunteer wherever you're based across the UK. Thank you, Sarah. So just to give you a bit of a flavour for the kinds of things that you'd be getting involved in if you were to volunteer with our regional networks, you can see a list there of the different kinds of initiatives. Um, I know that traditionally a lot of our focus has been about providing networking events and providing um, opportunities for face-to-face -face engagement, which is still really key and something we really value and that will be a big part of what our regional groups do. Um, but there's also other opportunities for people to get involved if perhaps they can't go to the face-to-face -face engagements or if they have other interests. Um, I think, as I mentioned, there's that huge outreach opportunity in terms of building APM and, and building our brand for things like cross-profession relationships, um, engaging with AGIs or, or building that perhaps emerging professional network within your region. Um, so there's a lot of things that you could be doing that aren't just about face-to-face networking and engagement. Um, we've also got our regional awards and competitions. Some of you might have seen our PM Challenge, which is a competition that runs um, at the moment in six branches aimed at students and graduates, giving our um, early careers people an opportunity to, to really get some hands-on um, opportunity to deliver a project from start to finish. We've also got regional branch awards that we run, so you could be getting involved in those kinds of things. We might be looking for judges or mentors um, who could support us in delivery of those activities. And we do have some conferences that run across our branch network, will be regional network, which um, you might be able to contribute with the content development or helping us source speakers. So there's a huge range of things that you can get involved in at many different levels. Thanks, Natalie. And the, the, like, likewise, we've got a, a quite a comprehensive list of um, activities that our current SIGs and our interest networks will get involved in um, as, their, as their new teams. Um, just touching on a couple of those, um, the guides, currently a SIG guide is, is quite a big task, a, a big activity and a project that a team might engage in that might well last up to uh, sometimes a year plus with, with all the publishing and the production of that guide. But it's a really valuable um, asset for APM, uh, the work and the effort and time that our volunteers put into to those guides and they're really valuable and there's a link there just to one as an example but you can find a number of those on our website uh, to have a look at. Um, we talked about blogs a little bit earlier that's something that um, a number of our current SIGs uh, produce uh, around their subject matter um, Podcast is something that is, is reasonably new and we are trying to encourage because it offers a different type of um, content in a different medium. So not everyone wants to sit and read. They like to, to listen as they're on the go. So podcasts are sort of getting a little bit more popular with our SIGs um, and we have a platform where we can publish those and that is also pushed out to the, the ordinary, you know, the everyday platforms that you might um, go to for your podcasts. Conferences um, are something that our SIGs also do and webinars. Webinars, they um, 
create and develop uh, quite a, a good number throughout the year, uh, always subject specific to their, their area and they'll work very closely with the volunteer team in getting that content pulled together, engaging with uh, people who can speak on the webinars and then having that published and sort of promoted so we get a good audience and a good engagement. They're always recorded and, and reshared after the event as well. From a conference point of view, that, that's a little bit more uh, limiting in the sense of that we aim to deliver about three SIG conferences a year. Some of those are dedicated to some repeat um, conferences because we know that they are a really popular subject matter, but that's something that we review on an annual basis to see what is needed and what's, uh, what's the demand out there. But um, from year to year, we're looking at delivering three SIG conferences um, each year. Um, and again, that's quite a big ask. That's quite a lot of um, work for our volunteers so uh, the amount of time and effort they put into that is really really appreciated and we need them because they're the subject matter experts in that in the sense of what they're delivering in the content so a lot of collaboration with our events team and producing those um, activities. Um, so this is just a quick snapshot of what we have available at the moment what we're recruiting for as Sarah mentioned the two um, lead areas that we're recruiting for at the moment are within the regional network so we're looking for people to apply to be regional network leads across our 13 UK based um, regions we're not recruiting for Greater Bay Area at the moment but our other 13 regions are all um, recruiting for both the lead and the deputy for people who are interested in going for the lead role we're looking for associate full or fellow members who've held membership for a year or longer and if you have a look at the um, application page which I think is linked from this slide it'll give you a better idea of what the role description looks like and um, the criteria that we're looking to fulfill and it will also link you to the survey where you can apply so the key thing there just to remember is that it is open to APM members who are associate or above in their grade and then for the deputy lead role again this is an APM member role but we are recruiting from student upwards so anybody who holds student membership or upwards and has had membership for at least one year is eligible to apply um, the two roles will work really closely together and um, they will be driving the activity and, and leading the group of volunteers within their region uh, to deliver the activities that they scope out and plan. Then if we move on to the regional network volunteer, that's open to all, so you don't need to be a member, it's open to members and non-members to um, apply for that role. And the only eligibility criteria is that you should be 18 or over. So um, we're looking for, for people who are above the age of 18. And these are the people who will really be getting involved in those different focus areas, getting involved in um, those kind of activities that we outline. They'll be helping to deliver and um, build those collaborations and make that happen on the ground. Um, I know that we have a deadline date of the 1st of March but we are recruiting across the year. So if you don't manage to get your application through for the regional network volunteer by the 1st of March, then please do get in touch at a later stage and um, we can get you involved with your regional team and, and get you supporting the work that they're doing. For the regional network lead and the deputy lead, we do have a deadline of the 11th of February, which is fast approaching. So I think that's, that's Sunday, a few days away. So if you are keen, then please get your applications in. We'll be reviewing those applications and doing interviews um, in the weeks following the 11th of February. Yeah, so uh, not too long to go for that. And in addition to that, although we're not recruiting for the lead roles within our interest networks, we are recruiting for the volunteers. And as Natalie said, it's the same criteria for the interest networks as it is for the regionals. So you don't need to be an APM member to get involved. Um, that's, as we've mentioned, open until the 1st of March. But this is just a sort of a campaign, but as it will be open, those opportunities will be open throughout the year that you could get involved. So uh, do give that some consideration. Um, those links will be open for you to get to the relevant web pages and um, application forms if you'd like to submit um, an interest in getting involved.
Good. Thank you to Sarah, Natalie and Robin for the additional uh, details. Um, we are always hugely uh, grateful to our volunteers and we're really passionate about working together and um, supporting the project profession um, in many different ways. Uh, so we hope that if you are not a volunteer with APM already, that you will consider joining us. Um, that's, I think, the end of our presentation and we've got time for as many questions as you like. Uh, if there's anything that we haven't talked about, uh, you would like more details on. So there are some questions in the uh, question panel, um, which I've started to assign to people. But the first question is about neurodiverse community finding awards and ceremonies overwhelming emotionally. Can relate to that as someone with ADHD myself. Um, can we suggest that someone considers approaches? Manuel, I thought this might be something for you because uh, we have the... Uh, inclusion uh, events group that we're working on and, and how yes. we look at these. Absolutely. Um, so first of all, um, as Robbie mentioned, uh, we have established an internal um, group or, uh, to make sure that our events in general, and, and with events uh, we also um, talk about awards, ceremonies and every type of event, uh, are as accessible as possible uh, to uh, everyone. Um, we are implementing a number of actions uh, to improve the accessibility of our events overall um, and a lot of it is about um, us assessing um, the all the various elements that can be more or less challenging for people and communicating very clearly to the delegates of our events um, what they're going to find um, at the event itself uh, and for them to feel more comfortable in telling us whether they have any specific needs that we can support. Um, this is related to participation uh, to events. In terms of um, submitting applications for awards, uh, we have been considering the uh, difficulties uh, that that process might um, entail for um, uh, people who are uh, neurodiverse. Um, we have, for example, we're going to introduce the opportunity to submit an application via videos, via videos instead of having to write down uh, the whole um, application in, a, in an online form and others, other adjustments. We are, however, uh, we're always very, very open to get additional inputs by uh, anyone who would like to suggest adjustments. Uh, and we make a point a lot internally to make sure that we do our best uh, in um, adjusting our processes um, to be as inclusive as we can. So. Whoever asked the question, if you would like to get in touch uh, with us, um, that would be great. Uh, so that if you're happy to help us <laughs> in understanding what the main challenges might be uh, and, uh, and guide us in what we need to look into, uh, that would be very helpful for us and, and hopefully uh, for those who uh, have a bit more challenges in completing an application. Uh, yeah, that came from Ian Dockney as well. There was a second part as well. Um, we've got it written down, Ian, but I want to make sure we get to the other parts as well. He was asking about uh, or suggesting we look towards uh, not just neuroprofessionals, but the the full range of the career. Um, Sophie has asked, is it right to assume you need to, to be a lead, deputy lead or volunteer? You also need to be an SME on the particular area that the interest network is focused in. Uh, no, um, not necessarily. Um, experience, knowledge, I would say, of that area obviously helps, especially uh, if we talk about uh, interest networks. But in uh, at the moment, what we're recruiting for is leads and deputy leads for our regional network. So that's that's a local area. Um, I, I think Sophie is specifically asking about the interest networks on this one. So I think it was specifically on those. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, again, no, it's not necessary. Uh, it is going to be taken into consideration, uh, the, the knowledge of the sector, 
um, but it's more about the willingness to um, support activities and uh, guide uh, the delivery of uh, outcomes uh, about that topic. Thank you very much, Manuela. Um, there is a question just about the uh, applying for volunteer process and, and how long it takes. Uh, Rohit has done that. That might not be one for the whole group. That might be a more personal one. Um, there is a question for Natalie. I think it's for Natalie from Precious. Uh, can we just clarify, network volunteers are also welcome to apply to join a team at any time. Could you just clarify yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Sure. So at the moment we're running the campaign to recruit the lead and deputy lead and at the same time we're recruiting just general network volunteers. We are aiming to move to the new structure on the first, or sorry, around April, not necessarily the first, but around April. And um, as part of that move we would like to have a network team in place so that everybody can make that move together. Um, so we are asking for those applications to be sent through before the 1st of March, but once that team is in place, it's not to say that we won't be accepting volunteers to apply and to join the team at a later stage. We are putting the structure in place so that people can join throughout the year when they're able, because we appreciate that people's um, workflow and, and time and whatever they're dealing with in their lives outside of volunteering ebbs and flows. So we wanted to make the opportunity to get involved as accessible as possible. And that can be done at any time. Although once we make this migration to the new regional network team, we are hoping to have a good team in place, which is why we're running the campaign across all roles at the moment. Thank you very much, Natalie. Um, okay. the, there's one from Helen Mitford. Um, I'd be interested in the qualifications panel. How would I look into this? I've put the volunteers email in, but is there anything else that would be uh, useful to do? So th th that um, there are some which perhaps we sh should have mentioned um, earlier on. So the list of volunteering roles that we currently have at APM sort of within our volunteering program, a number of them are ongoing and you can apply and sort of apply to volunteer in a particular space like a mentor for instance and as Natalie's touched on um, regional and interest network volunteers at any point sort of throughout the year. There are some which are specific to a certain year um, when Manuela was talking about the award judges that's a particular recruitment phase at a certain time of year and the panels as well the qualification panels are the same thing so when we have a, a um, a, an opportunity uh, available we'll actually add that to our website so if you I uh, don't know if you could grab a link for that page um, Robin and pop it in the chat uh, we'll promote it on our website uh, for those type of activities as and when they come up because they're not all the time throughout the year um, so it is a case of letting us know if you're interested and we can keep you um, in informed of when they're coming about but probably one of the good things to do is to just keep an eye on that volunteer page on our website and you can see what's currently available what's ongoing um, and you can sort of dip in and out according to your, your capacity to get involved uh, yeah just got that now i'm going to put it into the chat and uh, there is a question from mohammed uh I'm, I'm not looking at the time just a heads up i'm not sure how long we have um mohammed uh, zeki who said as part of the social value project at my company i have delivered disability awareness training to a few managers i'd like to know if there's anything in the apm volunteering section to expand this type of awareness um i think it might have gone in a couple of times so i think that's the question is there anything uh, with the apm volunteering to do with that disability awareness um yeah, not sure who the best person to answer for that one is. Um, I'll try. Um, so we are, I'm, I'm not sure if the question is about whether it's, it's sort of an offer to support us delivering that type of training or if we already do so. Anyway, um, we are including more and more um, elements of um, awareness and training to our volunteers in terms of uh, um, diversity and inclusion. Um, we haven't gone very specifically into the disability element per se. Uh, it would be definitely very interesting to explore this. Um, so uh, please, if you could contact us, uh, it would be very nice uh, to have a chat. Uh, a bit more in detail about this element. I would be very happy to introduce 
uh, something that can be useful for uh, for our community. Thank you, Mohamed. I'm going to put the volunteers' APM email into the uh, into the answer there, Mohamed. So you have it. Uh, there is another question from Precious. Is there a maximum number of interest networks that you can volunteer with? No. Is a quick and simple answer. You can get involved with as many as you choose to and you have capacity for, really. So that would be lovely. Um, if you are not going to restrict yourself to one, um, please do have a look at all of them. And if they are of interest to you and you've got something to contribute and you'd like to get involved, then please, yeah, you can submit an application for all 14, soon to be 16. Um, so that would be great. And just touching on one of the earlier questions with regards to the timeline, um, the hopefully you're receiving a reply to say thank you for your application and so you know it's it's been acknowledged and received and then the next steps will be contacting you in March to talk about sort of um, getting involved and also there will be an onboarding process that we're going to be introducing for our volunteers so that will just give you um, some background to APM how you go about volunteering what you need to be aware of um, point you in the direction for policies that you might need to, to look at as and when you need to for instance, if you're a regional network volunteer and you're traveling to an event, you might want to and need to travel, um, claim some expenses. So lots of information for you to be aware of and have access to as a volunteer. And as a volunteer, uh, whether you're new or existing, uh, we'll be asking you just to, to go through that onboarding. It won't be anything too onerous. It will be online. It will be a case of you reviewing some content, reading and or reading content at a later date. But as long as you have the access to it so you'll you'll get that information um, as, as you're signed up as a volunteer and thanks Sarah I'd, I'd like to take the opportunity also to um, answer to the sort of second part of the question the, there was a question on neurodiversity earlier and then there was an element to it that I'm, I'm, I'm now reading which is about sort of catering for um, diverse um, age groups uh, of, our, of the profession itself, our members and our volunteers. Um, this person mentions that she, or he, sorry, uh, found, um, it looks like that the focus of our organization is more towards newer professionals uh, and lacks some consideration of the older ones. So I think um, we do uh, cater and consider all the various age range. I think probably what you notice more might be that, uh, for example, in the various activities that we've uh, uh, highlighted uh, for our regional networks, there is um, um, an emerging project professional, um, you know, some work, specific work on and for emerging project professional, or that uh, Robin's focus uh, is on uh, um, students. Uh, and those in the early stages of their career. That, that's because uh, part of our um, charitable status um, means that we need and want to support younger professionals to get into the profession in the right way, um, explain what it is about, support them in the journey. Uh, at the same time, uh, many of our activities involve uh, all the various uh, other age groups uh, and we do quite a lot also uh, more specifically for uh, our groups of members which might be for example our fellows members um, uh, or in the future uh, we'll be working more with our charter professionals which obviously are not necessarily an age group but they are more senior uh, professionals uh, in their career journey. So I think it's not probably, um, it's not visible uh, enough in what uh, we show in these presentations, uh, but we do approach um, and support the various areas. And to be fair, a lot of our volunteers um, are actually uh, fairly senior because they are at a stage in their career that where they're very happy to give back and support the, the younger um, professionals in their journey. Uh, but again, we're very happy to get inputs on anything specific that A, you might find challenging in finding in what we present uh, in our in, on the various communication challenge or anything that you would like to suggest as a focus uh, for us. Um, we're very happy to look into it um, and improve what we do. 
I would like to know if there are any benefits for volunteering. There are many benefits related to what you get out from volunteering in a way, which is uh, networking, accessing to many different people uh, at different uh, stages in their careers uh, from many different sectors. Um, uh, benefits you get out of is learning by doing uh, what, uh, what your volunteer role entails, but also by participating to um, events, making connections, etc. Um, there is a more sort of direct benefit, if that's the right way of calling it, of uh, um, being uh, um, having the opportunity of logging the volunteering activity that you might do as CPD hours, if you wish. Um, we also um, invite our volunteers to attend uh, forums and other meetings. So again, opportunities to learn and connect. Um, and we do provide to our volunteers uh, a digital badge that uh, everyone can use to show on their um, social media profiles and emails uh, that they're a volunteer. And uh, we see that uh, many of our volunteers have sort of proudly use it. Um, so recognition, visibility, learning, networking, connections um, are the overall benefits plus some more specific ones uh, such as the CPD hours or our digital badge. I hope that uh, responds to the question. I fully encourage you to stay in touch with us and if there's anything that you would like to uh, deep dive in a, bit, a little bit more or to suggest anything, uh, we would really welcome you contacting us. The um, email address that Robin has popped into the chat uh, is volunteers at apm.org.uk. That reaches all of us um, and, uh, and then between us we'll, uh, we'll reply depending on the specific question uh, or suggestion uh, to those of you specifically who have suggested sort of uh, potential improvements in terms of accessibility. Um, I really hope to hear from you. Um, we, we look forward to improve uh, every day uh, on that area and we need your help with that. I think if there's no other question, and again, you, you've got our email address to reach us whenever you uh, wish, uh, we can uh, uh, close the session, uh, thanking everyone um, of you who have joined and listened and asked questions, uh, thanking the rest of my team, Natalie Kepler, our branches manager, Robin Carden Evans, our uh, education outreach manager, and also the moderator for today, uh, and Sarah Slater, uh, our senior volunteering manager. My name is Manuela. Uh, please do reach out to us and hope you have a very good rest of the day. Thank you, everyone.